the future of genealogy research is almost here. At Roots Tech 2023, I discovered a project that's on family search that although you might not directly benefit from it, you will see just how amazing it is. So stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Howdy. Welcome to Family History Fanatics. If you're new here, my name is Devin Noel Lee, and I love helping people find meaning and connections through their family trees. For those of you in English-speaking countries, particularly the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and the United States, we have been heavily involved in genealogy research for a long time. But in South and Central America and Asian countries and other countries around the world that have documents, haven't always had the resources to do genealogy research. But FamilySearch has this project called Computer Generated Trees that are going to change that. Now on screen, you see a pedigree chart and you may think, well, it's not all that different. But in actuality, FamilySearch.org had a computer scan and interpret millions of historical records to construct a possible family tree for people who've lived in a particular location and time period, just like you've seen on the screen. Now, only the following locations have benefited from this computer generated trees program at the time of this recording. There's from Italy, Australia, Brazil, the Philippines, and a location in Mexico. The key point is that this computer generated tree is separate from the main one world family tree. If you're working with newbie genealogists or you are new to genealogy, with ties to these five countries, you should consider checking out this resource after building your initial family tree in the One World Family Tree. So I decided to test out this tool and pick the name Arcadio Hernandez, who lived in Nuevo Leon, Mexico. Notice the warning. Family Search predicts this feature has a moderate level of data accuracy. That means they think it might be right, but it definitely needs users to validate what we'll find. So let's th click through and explore. So I clicked on the computer generated tree for Nuevo Leon, and then I typed in Arcadio's name. Click search, and then you will see a number of different search options. And notice some Arcadios have their parents listed, and some, like this one at the top, has spouses and children, parents and spouses. This is pretty exciting. So let's go ahead and click through to Arcadio. Now we can view the traditional pedigree chart and notice this tree has four generations, children, Arcadio, and then two more generations for his wife. As you click each person, notice that the side panel will change and show you the events and relationships that the computer has pulled together. Arcadio, has a birth event and a census event. Inez has a birth event, a census event, and a birth registration. Now, if you scroll down the right panel, you will see the source citation for citing this project. It's a computer generated tree. I just like citing family trees, which are secondhand sources. Is it possible to see what the CGT is based on? I keep saying CTG. I think that's too much DNA in my brain. CGT. But regardless, the answer to the question is yes, you can see the original sources the computer used. All you have to do is make sure that you're signed in at the top, I'm signed in, and then scroll down and then you'll be able to see view sources. Once you click on that, you will see a colorized spreadsheet. Gotta love the power of spreadsheets. If you watched my video about the record linking lab, particularly when I highlighted the super family project of the 1880s, you might see a correlation with the concept of the computer generated tree project. The difference is a computer pulled together the records that seem to overlap with family names, dates, and places. And the more details that can help segment individuals into family clusters, the more success the program will likely have. Yet it's not perfect, which is why it's separated from the world one world family tree. But as people start using Family Search Family Tree and the CTGs in these underserved areas, 
the two will finally merge into one as all of that research is validated. It's pretty cool. The first row pertains to the computer generated tree. The next row is the first source associated with this tree and it's for Inez Maya. Remember, spelling is relative in genealogy records, so Moya and Maya is not problematic. I clicked on that link and I am brought to this record page. This is back on the main portion of the family search family tree. And notice I can view the original record and validate that this original record has the information that the computer generated tree extracted and if it seems like it matches the person I'm researching. Additionally, family search will often attempt to find a likely match in the family tree. If family search does not find a match or this isn't the person that the record relates to, then you'll be able to enter a new person to the one world family tree. You can proceed to attach this record to the family tree as you would any other source, but notice you might be able to pick up additional relatives along the way. So right now the family search family tree has Inez, an Alcario or Arcadio and a misspelling, but a potential daughter, Rita Hernandez Maya, the Hernandez Maya matches. And then it goes along with her son, Silviano. Remember, the point of the computer generated tree is it's not linked to the one world family tree. You can find possible trees from a specific source, and then you can attach those sources to the one world tree and build out that tree to reflect the accurate suggestions from the computer generated tree. This is super excited. And once you add records to the one world family tree, you'll then see record hints in the research help section of a person's profile. So notice I'm in the one world family tree, not the computer generated tree. I have Rita and if I click on Rita and come over here and there is another record hint and I can keep building out that family tree. I can always go back and work on the next entry, the next suggested record and keep going through the process of adding additional records and additional possible family members to the one world family tree after evaluating the sources from the computer generated tree after looking at those original records. This is fantastic. If you've used record hints for many years, you might not understand the power of this technology and just how revolutionizing it is. However, I like the choice of the countries currently available, particularly Mexico. I'm familiar with Catholic church records from New Mexico and Mexico and how many generations often appear in a baptismal record. They are a gold mine. Having seen Andy use spreadsheets and databases to process Cornwall, England parish records to try to piece together the residents of that area to find families manually, I can see the value of a computer program processing multiple details in a record within moments and recommending family units. I am impressed that Family Search separated the results of these trees rather than dumping the results into the One World Tree. And yet, the results do interact with the One World Family Tree in terms of hinting after one of the CGT Family Tree records is attached. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, while I wish this technology was available for processing the locations where my ancestors lived, Gillersheim in Hanover or all of Baden, hint, 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 I am excited about the future of computer generated trees as an assistant to the global family tree building effort. If you think this technology is interesting or frightening, share your thoughts in the comment section below. Additionally, tell me what locations you would like to see CGTs for in the future. Now, if you want to participate in building your tree on FamilySearch, check out this playlist for tips and tricks on how to do just that.